All right, guys, we are live. Thanks so much for taking us some time, Alex and James. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no doubt. It means a lot. So let's quickly go back to the beginning because I don't know if you've ever told the story, but um, I want to know how did you guys end up together to form, you know, a Witter Entertainment? How did that come about? Well, Alex, uh, James, I'll, I'll let you. <laughs> oh, we're both. Yeah, that's how we roll. Off to a terrible uh, start. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I w- I was in a band called Scholar uh, many moons ago, and we were looking for someone to document a recording we were doing. And I had caught up with Alex. He used to work at AbsolutePunk.net, which was like the place to go if you were into. I mean, it, it started. It was. Mo- it started out like punk, but then it kind of became like a an all encapsulating music online zine right alex i think yeah still but while you were there for a while yeah yeah um so we hooked up that way and i randomly posted on facebook one day like hey who wants to come video our uh our silly band recording stuff and alex was like well get me out there and i'll do it so we did and uh struck up a friendship that lasted a long time and i've always liked his um website broke horror fan i think always had a great ring to it and and a cool kind of focus on what on what he was doing. And when we discussed maybe using that name as a brand, um, we would just went through a few of the different um, items we could maybe potentially produce and sell. And one of the first things we landed on, you know, was, was VHS because that, uh, you know, I grew up with it. And I think the aesthetic and Alex was was already a collector at the time had had thought about it before. And it just kind of made sense to move forward in that direction. Uh, for that kind of uh, endeavor, and that's what leads us here today. But we are technically separate entities, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. yeah. So James, yeah. James is Witter. I'm Brokar fan. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he he was like, "Hey, how can we exploit Brokar fan's audience?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, seriously, that's the way to do it, man. Uh, no, but it's. I mean, I had been doing the Brokar fan site for, <clears throat> excuse me, for a few years. Um, and you know, it's. I missed the uh, the bubble of being able to like make money with a website. So like I had a big social following and stuff like that, but wasn't, you know, didn't mean anything to the outside world. Uh, so kinda, <laughs> yeah, kinda we, like had, a... we both had similar uh, interests and yeah, I don't like sure. social media as much. So like that kind of evened itself out, I guess, the in the hang there, because as you can see, we do not have a large following. We do have like a really engaged audience uh, who yeah. like uh, the VHS that we're doing, uh, particularly under Witter. And uh, branding them under Broke Horror Fan uh, Presents. Yeah, man. Oh, I love it. So, you know, I was going to ask, uh, you know, why VHS? But I think you kind of covered that. But why do <laughs> I you... Can... Yeah, yeah, just... definitely. If you want to roll with it. I'll elaborate that on uh, for a sec. Um, because, like James said, we were talking about, like, what we could do. And I knew immediately, we both, we agreed. We didn't want to do, you know like posters there's already a million companies who do that really well shirts there's a million companies who do that really well records you know etc like all the stuff that i collect that uh, right. you know there's already so many companies out there doing it and vhs at the time when we started lunch meat was the only one doing it like regularly and to the extent that we wanted to i think yeah um, yeah i think so and yeah it was an idea i toyed with uh a couple years prior and it just didn't pan out um but the the concept of being able to do new movies that kind of feel like they make sense on, you know, in the retro format um, just seemed like a perfect fit. And, you know, we both agreed on that. And the timing worked out that Victor Crowley was our first release. Um, and we were super, super pumped for that. I'm a longtime yeah, fan of Adam good. Green's work. Uh, and yeah, and now we've been doing it for five years. That's amazing. Yeah, we thought we'd do like three, five titles a year, maybe, and now we're up to more than that. So, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> been more than that. I would say that the re- exploiting of the audiences has reversed, given the labor and intense amount of work <laughs> involved on both parts, <laughs> uh, especially for the the expense of making a modern VHS run to quality in in twenty twenty three. Yeah, oh, and man. doing it for yeah, it's definitely getting gets tougher and tougher. But you know, it is a lot of fun, and uh, well, obviously. It's, an important medium for both of us. I love it, man. That's great. You know, what I was going to say is, um, you know, why do you think that, that these releases are so popular with fans? Like, you know, you know, why do you think that we as, you know, like as, uh, con- you know, as customers, um, why the hell do we want VHS so bad? You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, 
It's crazy. Um, I mean, I would say nostalgia is the biggest driving factor. Obviously, these particular movies won't on weren't on VHS. Um, but I think so many of us grew up in that era where you know there was a ritual to watching a movie. It was so different back then. Um, the the tactile nature of a tape, the you know the sounds, the hum, the the glow. It has such a particular uh, aesthetic to it that I think, mm-hmm. you know, there's no replicating it. Um, there's certainly better ways to watch movies. Um, no one is going to argue that VHS is like a better quality format, but there's just something, I don't know, warm and friendly about it, for lack of a better word. Um, and the other side is just the the collector mentality. Um, you know, we a lot of our stuff is very limited um, whenever we have something, or especially if we occasionally venture into non tape stuff. You know, I always ask myself, like, is this something as a collector I would want to buy? Um, mm-hmm. And if it is, we go forward with it. If not, you know, back to the drawing board. Uh, but same same with VHS titles, really. Um, you know, we've we've gotten bigger titles than we ever expected to get. Um, so now we have to kind of limit what we can do. Um, but it all comes back to like, you know, if I was just a, just a customer, would I buy this? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, big same on that one. Yeah. <laughs> No doubt, man. Um, so I was going to say, where do you guys get your stock of VHS tapes and cases? I mean, who even makes those anymore? Like, um, I source more, most of well, all of our uh, supplies and inventory and packaging. And it's generally a mix of finding new old stock sealed tapes, um, however you can. You know, it's kind of the Wild West out there. Um, we've explored, like, you know, importing um, in bulk. But those things are super expensive to do, especially, you know, the, a lot of the reason like it took off is because there is always going to be an audience for it, but it's a niche market. So like, you know, licensors aren't likely to make what they could make sell on a VHS. They're not going to put those resources uh, into it. Uh, we can. So that's what like, kind of explains, like, I think how the partnerships have worked out with us and other our, our colleague uh, labels that do the same thing. Um but essentially, yeah, you're just kind of getting the best quality stock you can um, wherever you can. Um, and there's still like a, a factory that makes, you know, the the clamshell cases. And there's I think Bags Unlimited has like, you know, um, affordable, like, you know, smaller scale, like hard shell clamshell cases and like blockbuster rental cases and stuff still. So like as a collector and like doing it for fun, you can you can find some stuff that way, too. That's awesome. the, the tape itself. At least in America, I don't. Yeah, think it doesn't. Anybody they thinks. don't produce it so, anymore now. So it's really and, just yeah, new old stock. Yeah, I think around the world where you could get it from still potentially is probably working from just a lot more uh, new old stock, even if it's just the tape. Sure, that's crazy. I love it. So, um, you know, what would you say has been like your best selling title to date? Is one you know? Do you guys know which one is your top seller over the last five years? I'll give you a guess. <laughs> yeah, what do you think it is? What do you oh, think it is? I yeah, that, that's awesome. I think it's probably going to be Terrifier. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be right. Yeah, yeah. I think wait, say the first one or the folks. second one? Which one? Well, the first one now because we re-released it a few times. Uh, I'm sure over time, gotcha. part two. I think technically the part. I think part two is probably. You th- way yeah. ahead of it yeah i'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure our, our top three our yeah our top three has to be terrifier one terrifier two and mandy yeah For sure. I say that's probably correct you know it's funny i remember when terrifier brought down your site that's how uh popular yeah, but, it was. <laughs> yeah, but to think of it we released terrifier one at least three times before that and there wasn't you know it'd be a little hairy there like any you know thing you're trying to get that's a little popular but it would always kind of work out that was a whole different scenario. Like I said, like we still have like the dust to clear and see. I think my <laughs> my thought is Terrifier Two is probably gonna be the top there. Um, but we're we're still like working our way through that whole situation. But the good news there is that we're turning everything around to the next drop will be in stock, and we'll have the server uh, sorted out. It's been it's been better, but I'm still not convinced we don't have to upgrade it more for like another real Terrifier Two drop. Sure. No, I feel you, man. You know, and some of your titles are limited, right? To 50, maybe 100, even yeah. 25 copies. Yeah, more uh, so we're doing the hundreds, I would say. But sometimes we still will pop in at 50. Yeah, 50, I mean, so why the limited quantity? You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, well, some, was, sometimes we're not going to sell 50 tapes and we just like a, the, a movie a lot. We think it'll fit and we, the opportunity shows up. Sure. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, licensing, you know, the less we produce, the less it costs us. And, if, you know, it's, it's not cheap to make VHS tapes yeah. in 2023. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, it ups the collectability. We usually, for most titles, the, at least the popular titles, um, We'll have a standard edition, which we can re-release in the future. Then we might not have 500 copies in stock on day one, but over time we can release more. And then we'll do variants that are super limited. Yeah. Um, so essentially, just, it's oh, sorry to cut you off. No, I was gonna say just like just a, a fun thing for collectors. It you know keeps people coming back and and seeing what we have, yeah. and then yeah. And overall, the they're so limited that no matter what we produce, it'll all be out of print. Uh, the scale is quite small even well that's you know, for that's Terrifier the other thing yeah versus a uh, blu-ray yeah i mean stock in general vhs stock in general as we already said you know is harder and harder and harder to come by so we kind of we can't produce more you know as much as we want to sometimes right. for that yeah reason. i mean it's a time thing too we're expanding like a you know duplication capabilities what we have we're doing that because we have you know four projects going at once or something like that that's cool that's cool and how do you guys pick um, which films you're going to release next? Um, at the start, it was just like, uh, kind of shot in the dark, praying, um, relying on a lot. I had had some, like, well, that still is, I think. Well, yeah, that that's true. Uh, I had had some like industry friends who like introduced us to distributors and like, you know, they were, they vouched for us, which was very kind. Um, and that got our foot in the door at some places, um, and now we have a relationship with a bunch of distributors and that's exciting. So when we see a title that we want, that's a distributor who we work with regularly, we'll like email them the second, you know, a movie's announced to be like, Hey, you know, it's not coming out for a year, but we want this. Yeah. Sure. I'll, and I'm, I'll do that. I'm worse about that. So I'll, cause I'll see something cool and I'll just like, and you know, email and they'll be like, yeah, that's, we'll keep, we'll try to remember that in a year <laughs> yeah. when we give it, when we care, when we're selling this to like an international <laughs> or like getting like worldwide distribution, <laughs> we'll worry about this VHS, but yeah, thanks. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I was say on a, on a broad scale, it's, it's, it's very much a conversation between James and I, once we know what we're able to get, you know, we'll weigh the pros and cons, see what our schedule looks like, what we have, what releases we have coming up, where we can fit it in, you know, will this movie have legs in six months or will it be, you know, will people not care about it so much, you know, after the day it's released, um, you know, all contributing Yeah, factors. that's that's where it's getting, you know, a little bit more difficult to, like, figure out what we're, exact- we're going to do as much um, because while we'd like to do, like, you know, more or as much as we want to do, we definitely can't logistically. Yeah. Just, just because of schedules and other obligations and... You know, Alex also is the Screenbox publicist now. So that's obviously a pretty big undertaking. Sure. That was actually going to be one of my questions. You know, uh, when you guys aren't working in, um, on Brokar Fan or uh, Witter Entertainment, what do you guys, you know, uh, what do you guys do for fun or what do you do that, um, you know, oh, outside have... of that? Yeah, life outside. I have 300 jobs I can go through. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I I run the broke horror fan. A uh, separate from the VHS is is a website um, that right. showcases horror movie merchandise and stuff like that. Um, I'm also a contributor to Bloody Disgusting. Um, and then, as James mentioned, uh, Screenbox, which is a horror streaming service. Uh, I'm yeah, the publicist and uh, social media manager. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and then I'm also a freelance video editor. So oh whatever. God. And then any free time I have, I just watch horror movies. <laughs> totally. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I essentially um, just work on our line, which is you know very lucky we've been able to do that. Um, it's a lot of work, but I also um, consult with um, other companies and do a lot of ecom work. Um, I'm a musician, so I'm always working on that kind of stuff. Uh, sound engineering. Um, things of that nature, but mostly I'm just focusing on Widow Entertainment, growing its sure. whatever we're doing. That's so. right. I uh, forgot to mention, I'm also a indie filmmaker. I make a lot of shorts and James. That's true. I That's make, a big one. Do, I, make, <laughs> I make James do my sound design work. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So you guys work together on everything. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think that'll stop. We got a lot of the stuff otherwise that we're talking about. And always working yeah, we write on together too. We've written yeah. a couple shorts together. That's awesome. And an entire screenplay once. That's true. 
Wow, wow, wow. That's awesome. And, you know, was there ever a title that you guys wanted to get but actually couldn't get? Is there one? Oh, I'm sure there's countless, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, anything that's at a major studio, they're not going to return our emails. Right, um, right, right. I mean, every once in a while, we get like a, oh, yeah, like a response, you know, and, and then it's just a follow-up doesn't happen, and that's kind of the same story that, well, I think with anything, really, it's no we understand it. We, you know, sometimes we end up having to do the same thing on accident. You know, we don't mean to, but yeah, I mean, I, it, we've talked like, you know, like, down. like dream titles would be like, you know, franchises that we grew up watching on tape, like they're new and stuff. Like if we were to do like the new Halloween or the new scream or whatever would be incredible. Um, just not in the cards right now. But when we did start, we made a list of like what we, we called them our white whales. It was like five titles that like were, potentially attainable they weren't quite uh major studio movies and we we've done a couple of them uh mandy was one of the main ones mm -hmm. um yeah, so i mean list. that that would be cool uh the other another like dream one would be to get in the door at a24 because they're i mean they're just making some of the most interesting they made one vhs tape once they did it once <laughs> yeah. in 20 in 2017 and then they I made, saw one, like made one themselves once and said never again yep. it was too much I, work yeah i saw a tweet and then <laughs> Elijah Wood was like, come on, that'd be cool. Don't stop doing it. And then they just never did it again. But <laughs> that was like, well, if Elijah Wood said that, that makes sense that he'd be down with a Mandy VHS. <laughs> <You know, but, laughs> that's um, true. So Frodo cool. does have our tapes in his house. Yeah. I love it. So, you Cut know, <laughs> with, with you guys just celebrating your fifth anniversary, um, you know, what other surprises do you have planned for, the rest of the year can you give us like a sneak peek of like what's next or something um let's see if i can be coy about it uh yeah. better at being coy <laughs> we have i mean the rest of our year is like all booked up we'll have cool. at least at least one title a month through the rest of the year um some a couple re-releases uh, a few new titles um for, I mean, I guess we can say we'll have Terrifier 2 in stock again at some point. Right. Um, we'll be announcing a, a restock with a new variant uh, within like a couple weeks. Cool. Um, and let's see. Uh, can I tease anything? Uh, one title. This is super vague and it won't make sense until any, if unless anybody goes back and listens to this after it's announced. But like a title that. It's not like a sequel to an old property, but it's uh, I don't know how to say it, related to a property that's been on tape before, but it's a new oh, iteration um, that I think people are going to be excited about. That's awesome. You know yeah, what would be a good movie, fun. guys? You guys ever see The Guest? That would be a good oh, VHS. I, yeah, we've, we've talked huge, about that before. Huge fan of sure. that. Um, yeah. I think we looked into who owns it. And yeah, it, I thought uh, we did. They never, we didn't get a response or something. Uh, but I, loved, I mean, who loved knows? To, that one and um, your next, which is you know same yep. director. And there are a lot of other labels doing you know still smaller runs, uh, t VHS tie-ins. But there's there's other stuff to look at. You know there's retro release video and Terror Vision. I've always done VHS. So there's going to be like not everyone can do every title at every time. So I think there's going to be a lot of like good VHS coming in the future from a bunch of uh, labels that kind of have done it longer than us or have been around just around the same time until uh -huh. now and hopefully beyond so i think there's a lot i don't think i think it still has legs and i think we'll probably get some surprises we don't expect in regard to vhs in the future i would imagine that's amazing well you guys are crushing it that's all i could say um i'm a big yeah, fan. fact I, I just sent out i think i sent out one of your packages yesterday or today or <laughs> i saw the name when i was Packing that's me up, man saying, yeah, i think i, I ordered like yeah. seven videos the other day <laughs> yeah was, well thank you well, thank you for that I was dying sure. laughing. I was like, "Holy crap! How many did I disorder?" <laughs> yeah, well, we I've, we've been moving workspaces um, finally, so like this thing started for me in a dining room, and now you know a couple of different basements later, we're getting into a, a little bit of a bigger, more more workable space. But as we were moving around, I can I found like you know, every time we release something, there's unclaimed tapes or refunds or canceled orders and stuff. You know, maybe a handful of old. So there's a bunch of old stuff that just has a few copies up there. That wow. actually a lot of people were interested, you know, enough people were interested sure. in to really come back on our anniversary or the five year anniversary last uh, last month. Yeah, man. I, I really wanted that yoga hosers. 
<laughs> a lot of people did. Uh, we did not expect that many yoga hosers. Luckily, I had like a bunch of, you know, extra art, not a bunch. But we had like, you know, 15, I think, of those. And I was like, well, I guess we'll just, I guess we're putting up the rest of these. That's freaking awesome. That's so cool. So listen, yeah, guys, a, I I'm appreciate, a yoga the, uh, appreciate the time. I don't want to keep you too long, but um, I, I got everything I need. So um, what I'll do is I'll get this up and, uh, you know, you guys can pass it around if you, you know, yeah, sure. if you dig it and whatnot, you know, and then we'll um, we'll promote the hell out of it. That's what I'll do. So perfect. Look forward to it. Cool, man. All right.